Welcome back for another video. My name is Justin, this is Blaze Capital, and we have another sponsored video for you today. Today we're gonna to be talking about Numinous Wellness. They are a psychedelic company listed on the uh, CSC under Numi. And uh, I'm not quite sure what their US listed name is. Let's look and see here. What are they under the US here? It looks like they are LKYSF. So if you're looking for the ticker on the OTC, that is it. If you're looking for on the CSC, it is Numi. Uh, this is an interesting company that got presented to me. So uh, what I like about, again, we often start with the chart because the chart tells us what the sentiment for the company is. Right now, the chart looks pretty good. Uh, we can see it's been a recent IPO. And again, what I'm identifying there is just a big old cup and handle. So we have the first part right here, which is a huge cup. And then we're coming back down to form the handle. That's what it looks like to me. So we went uh, all the way up and now we're forming that handle here before we go higher is what it looks like. So what I also like here is that the volume profile is actually quite bullish. So we can see that the biggest candles are all green and the stock is coming back down to its IPO to retest those levels. I like that about the stock. So let's find out more about the company. It looks like it closed up 7% uh, on Friday as well, closing up more than uh, seven, seven cents to above a dollar. Numinous Wellness Inc. is a healthcare company that operates a testing and research facility that can support the uh, emerging market of psychedelic therapies to supplement existing options in addressing medical illness, addiction, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Through its subsidiary, it tests and analyzes, can it tests and analyzes cannabis products from licensed producers. It also allows to test, possess, buy, and sell MDNA, MDMA, uh, psilocybin, psilocin, DMT, and masculine. Uh, Miscalin, sorry. The company was founded by Peyton Nikuvest and Stacy Wallen in June of 1962 and is headquartered in Vancouver, Canada, another hometown company. So uh, what's interesting about this is that, uh, again, uh, this is an interesting space for me. Um, I've been microdosing lately. Uh, actually, I've been microdosing for a little while off and on, and I found some benefit in it. It's not quite uh, fully developed yet, but I find it interesting. Um, what I want to do here is just quickly flip through their website and then we're going to have a look through their deck. And again, the reason why we're doing this is because the chart warrants further investigation. Again, news versus reaction to the news. The reaction to the news here is that the chart is pretty happy if it can remain above a dollar. So uh, sitting here at about a dollar and four cents, it looks interesting. It looks interesting. All right. Who is Numinous and what do they do? Psychedelic assisted uh, psychotherapy to heal and be well. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, safe legal access is going to become increasingly available for a range of conditions, including uh, depression, PTSD, and substance use disorders. Mental health care is broken, but it can be fixed. I fully agree. This is also a lot of stigma around this. Uh, mental health is generally not something that people want to talk about, do talk about, or that uh, is really discussed at any level. It's really, really sad. You break your arm, no problem. You break your foot, no problem. You, you get uh, cancer, no problem. You got a mental health issue? That's like uh, taboo, can't talk about it. Uh, Numinous supports access to psychedelic assisted psychotherapy through ketamine assisted, ketamine assisted psychotherapy, special access and uh, compassionate access trials. Interesting. So ketamine assisted psychotherapy, that's interesting. Mindspace practitioners in Montreal are offering KAP, which can be prescribed to address treatment-resistant depression. Special assistance for psilocybin and MDMA. Compassionate access trials for psilocybin and MDMA. So what's interesting about this is that, again, cannabis is quite taboo, but now it is legal here in Canada. Uh, some of these other, uh, other drugs here, again, I don't know. I know that uh, microdosing for MDMA has had some, uh, some benefits. I've never personally done it. Um, I also know that uh, psilocybin and microdoses do provide, does provide some benefits. I have tried that. I can, I can agree with that. Uh, transformative changes as needed. Uh, nearly a billion people worldwide, world, worldwide currently suffer from mental disorders. Yeah, that's a lot of people. That's a big market. Total addressable market is big. Um, 450,000 people worldwide died from drug use in 2015. That's a lot. One in two Canadians will be affected by mental health issues by the age of 40. Uh, that's, uh, that's a lot. 4,000 Canadian di uh, Canadians died of suicide per year, almost 11 suicides per day. That's a lot, unfortunately. One in two Canadians receive inadequate care when experiencing depressive episode. Yep, why? It's taboo. One in five Canadians suffer from addiction in, in any given year. Uh, yep, that's a lot. 
One in 15 Canadian adults suffer from PTSD in their lifetime. I think with the current lockdown, this is becoming an increasingly bigger problem. 51 billion, the estimated annual economic burden of mental illness in Canada. That's a big number too. Uh, we are going to go through their investor deck in a moment here, uh, but let's have a look at their news releases, see what they got here. Um, let's click on news releases, see what there is. Um, oh, en français aussi? Ah, oh, mon homme, c'est excellent. Vous parlez en français? Excellent. Uh, it looks like Numinous announces closing a $40 million bot financing. I want to have a look at that. Ah, oh, $40 million. Here it says 30 here it says 35 So it looks like it was probably oversubscribed. Initially here for 30 coming up to 40 Expand state-of-the-art psychedelics research lab. Regulatory approvals place numinous labs at the forefront of global psychedelics research. Okay, okay. Um, I want to have a look at this. Why? Uh, they're raising money. How much is a company worth? They've raised the money, which is good. So again, what's good about this? Uh, so 122, uh, 122 million share float uh, at roughly $1. That's going to be about 122 million bucks. And $40 million placement, so that's interesting. That's a pretty big raise, right? Uh, whoa, so what's interesting to me here is just the raise price. So again, $40 million was put in at 125, um, but now we have to figure out is how much dilution there was. So 28 million units. Let's just read this really fast here. The news release is intended for distributing. Okay, there we go. Anyways, Vancouver, Canada, BC. Numinous Wellness, uh, a company creating an ecosystem of health solutions centered around the safe, evidence-based, and accessible use of psychedelic-assisted psychotherapies, is pleased to announce that it has closed a bot financing deal of 28 million units, the units. So that would be $28 million of the company at, oh no, sorry, at 125. Uh, for total gross proceeds of 35 million. The offering was conducted by Eight Capital and Canaccord, together the underwriters. The underwriters also exercised their over allotment option in full to purchase an additional 4.2 million, 4.2 million units. That's an interesting number, 4420. Uh, for additional gross proceeds of 5.25, including the proceeds from the exercise and over allotment option, the total gross proceeds for the offering are for 40.25. What I want to look at here is 5250 divided by 4.2. Same price, 1.25. What's inter interesting about that is, again, here we're at 104. So, again, $40 million was put in. We're currently below that share price. 125 is where they raised. So, 125, and we're currently below. You're getting a discount to where these guys put money in, 40 million bucks. So, the other thing we just want to uh, keep in mind here is that they printed about 28 million shares plus 4.2. So, 28 plus 4.2. They printed a total of roughly 32 million shares. So they printed about 32 million shares out of 322. Oh, market cap is 142 here. How does that make sense? So they're probably including the new shares here. So share float says 122. And again, I'm assuming these numbers are correct. Maybe they're not. Uh, minus 122. So we saw a dilution of about 25%. That could explain the reason why the stock actually took a slide. So again, we got some dilution here. Um, but at the time here, again, uh, what's going on here? So like we dipped down by about 25%. Uh, what time, what date was this issued actually? March 19th. Where's March 19th on here? That would have been on this week right here. So yeah, that makes sense. We dipped down by about 25%. The dilution's now been in. Uh, but again, you're getting a discount to where these guys actually put in money. There's forty million dollars that thinks that one twenty-five. That's a bargain. That's what. That's what. We're, that's what I'm seeing here. So one twenty-five. That would be a short-term upside target. That's about uh, twenty cents from here, uh, or about twenty percent. Right. That's not bad. Uh, twenty percent upside. And again, easy to easy to put a stop in here because uh, below a dollar or below about ninety cents. Right. Easy to get out. Uh, with this much money behind it, I think they're going to support the share price. Don't know for sure, but I think they will. All right, uh, jumping into the deck here, we're already, already at about nine minutes. So I'm going to go through here fairly fast, but again, uh, that's very interesting to me that they've now raised money and uh, we're getting a discount to it. So on the website, they told us uh, some information. Here we're seeing that they're listed on the TSXV. I like that. It's not a CSE stock. Uh, developing and delivering psychedelic therapies to transform medical health care. All right. Again, forward-looking statements. We all know that. And again, this is a sponsored video. I encourage you to always do your own due diligence before making an investment decision for yourself. 
Uh, just like any other video on YouTube, uh, you always wanna make sure you do, do your own research to make sure that this investment aligns with your uh, risk appetite and your investment horizon. Unmet need. Mental health is a $100 billion industry and current treatments are failing. Uh, bringing psychedelics to the mainstream. Breakthrough potential. Psychedelics are becoming more mainstream, validated and academic and, uh, by academic and industry research. Competitive edge. Involved in all stages of bringing safe, effective psychedelic therapies to market from supply to patient delivery. Grounded in science. Medical research and clinical experts supported by renowned advisors drive industry firsts. Deep moat. Oh, that's a that's an interesting word, right? Moat means uh, um, how they have a competitive advantage. High barriers to entry, creating an ecosystem of solutions reinforced by IP, um, strategic partnerships, and regulatory uh, advantages. Growth platform, well-funded and revenue generating to advance businesses, acquisition, and service rollout strategy. I understand now, right? They're well capitalized. I would agree. They got tens of millions of dollars. The wind is at our backs. Numinous becomes the first Canadian psychedelics company to legally harvest magic mushrooms. Very interesting. They're the first. Even before Mind Meta looks like, again, I don't know a lot about the space, but I, I don't, sorry, I don't know every company in the space, um, but this is interesting to me. It looks like they were a first. A global ep ep uh, epidemic and failing uh, system of mental health care. We know this, right? So how many slides are here? We got about 21 slides. I want to spend uh, time on the most significant ones. We already reviewed these numbers on the homepage, so we can probably skip this one. In contrast, breakthrough, breakthrough for trauma treatment, safety and efficacy of MDMA assistance psychotherapy compared to pyroxenic and cetranolanin. I have no idea what those are. Um, over 80% of patients describe their psilocybin experiences among the five most personal, meaningful, and spiritual signif significant experiences of their lives. Why? Out of, out of body, out of mind experience. It gives you a good reflective approach. So if you're having some kind of mental issue, getting out of your head and looking back from a bird's eye view, that's what these things do. And again, eight out of 10 people, that's quite a few. The tide is turning. Um... Terminally ill Canadians get, gain legal right to use magic mushrooms for end of life distress. Yeah, there's a lot of things that can, this can help with, right? Uh, winter 2020, Health Canada proposed regulatory revisions to allow controlled access to psychedelics aside of clinical trials. Fall 2020, psychedelic legalization and de decriminalization enter and win on U.S. ballots. Some U.S. ballots. It'd be nice if they're a little bit more specific on that. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what states, right? I'm not sure. Uh, summer 2020, Health Canada begins appro approving psilocybin therapy for select patients with terminal illness. What's the worst that could happen? They're going to die anyway, right? Uh, 2019, Imperial College of London and John Hopkins open world for psychedelic research centers. 2018, oh, this is a, I'm reading it backwards here. Uh, 2018, FDA begins to recognize breakthrough therapy uh, status. MDNA for PTSD, yep. Uh, synthetic psilocybin for treatment resistance disorders, yep. Synthetic psilocybin for major depressive disorders, yep. $100 billion, oh geez. Market opportunity, total addressable market or the TAM for mental health, annual, annual global. Global annually, can accord genuity around the corner, May 2020. 2.5 to 8.5 trillion. Lost economic output due to mental, neurological, and substance use disorders. That's a big number. This deck actually looks pretty nice. It's, uh, again, they're like a $120 million company, something like that. So the deck looks pretty good. It's actually prepared pretty well here. It's easy to follow along. Nice graphics, not too much text. I like it so far. An integrated business model for he uh, healing at scale. Health, bioscience, and R&D. Uh, so, Numinous Bioscience develops therapeutics and IP-relevant methods of using Health Canada licenses, scientific expertise, and cutting-edge technology. Numinous R&D develops clinical and therapeutic protocols for treatments in collaboration with research partners and regulators. Numinous Health delivers professional treatment through clinics and virtual services. All right, 14 minutes here. Let's see. Uh, we're only halfway through the deck. So, minutes are going a little bit faster here. Their assets. Um... So they develop therapeutics as part of an applied research agenda with IP advantages. There you go. Industry barriers to entry. Again, complex mandatory licensing for psychedelic research. Limited supply of qualified research, state-of-the-art technology, and specialized equipment. I think that's part of the reason why they've likely raised some money is to try to get a first mover's advantage. They were the first ones to... Uh, where was I here? Um... 
They told us they were the first ones to harvest it. There you go. Uh, this is in Forbes too, right? So Numinous becomes the first Can Canadian psychedelics company to legally harvest magic mushrooms. Get those mush. All right, all right. Oh, look at those. I don't know what kind those are. Uh, they're clearly magic mushrooms. You can see that by the, the blue and the purple on here, right? The blue, nice and moldy, right? Yeah. It looks like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the different types of mushrooms names. Um, I know there's quite a few of them. Um, again, just interesting here. And then it looks like they're distilling this down into a liquid format. Again, these things taste pretty bad when you try to eat them. So it looks like they're, I don't know if they're extracting it or what they're doing. Um, I've just taken the micro doses in the, in the, in the capsules. R and D our assets. Uh, medical team of specialized training to integrate psychedelics into clinical care. Medical leadership with record of collaborating with Health Canada and other regulators to drive policy change. They're probably being consulted for actual uh, high level, uh, um, high level R and D. Develops clinical protocols under medical leadership in concert with regulators and research partners. Right. First company to partner with a psychedelics pioneer, MAPS, on Canada's first compassionate access to MDNA, MDMA for PTSD. Um, Canada's first compassional trial for psilocybin of, for substance use disorders. Okay, okay, okay. Looks like they got a lot of firsts here. Uh, Numinous Health delivers the highest quality of care to patients using Numinous protocols uh, and special, specially trained practitioners in custom design spaces. Uh, recently announced two, mil, two Montreal clinic, clinics already offering KAP, operating in clinics in Vancouver, offering non-psychedelic treatments. Again, uh, so again, it looks like they're actually pretty robust here. And again, it takes money to do these things. So I understand why they've raised now too, right? 40 million bucks is quite a bit of money. Nothing to compare to what these cannabis companies have done though, right? Yeah, like Aurora. Oh, billion dollars more, please. Billion more. <sighs> Um, ah, so it looks like they actually got their start in Vancouver, acquired first clinic in Vancouver, 2019, June, financing of 800,000 in December, acquired health Canada license lab with, uh, okay. That's interesting. Received Canada's license to pub code, to grow and extract. Okay. 4.6 million financing. So they've actually done quite a bit of financing here. So. Almost a million, 4.6 million, 17 million, and now they've done 40 million. They keep raising more and people are willing to put in more and more and more. That's interesting. What's their path forward? So now that they've raised this money, what's the path forward? Developing innovative therapeutics and other products. Developing treatment protocols starting with ketamine, MDNA, and psilocybin. Delivering transformative patient experience. Building and acquiring clinics that are growing, profitable, and located in larger metropolitan areas. Okay. Our guiding principles, patient-centric. patient, patient -centric. Uh, We are committed to delivering the best patient cost, uh, outcomes. Uh, thoughtful expansion. We expand based on careful assessment of research advances and regulatory changes. Sustainable operations. We balance exploratory activities with ongoing revenue generation. Collaborative leadership. We actively ally with other leaders to raise industry standards and develop best practices. Interesting. Capitalization. Market cap. Oh, it's 210 million. Oh. When was this created? February 2021. That uh, debt financing is as of March. So they got a lot more cash on the bank in the, in the till now. Um... So it's actually worth 200 million. What was the share price at the time though, right? Cause again, like the share price has come down since February. So like from $2 down here to about $1, right? That's a, uh, that's a big, that's a big, big, big difference. So that's probably right. Uh, warrants outstanding options, fully diluted 188. Founding founder ownership. Ah, he only owns about 5%, right? It's kind of been like diluted out. Top 10 holders. Compass Pathways, Numinous Wellness, as of January. MindMed, ah, interesting. Johnson & Johnson, interesting. That's interesting. MindMed owns just under 10% of these guys. Johnson & Johnson is very notable too. Interesting, interesting. So again, they're on the, on the, uh,
Numinous on PSYK, world's first psychedelic focus ETF on the NEO. Okay. So Peyton founded the company, former capital markets executive who has raised $100 million for public and private companies across North America, formerly led one of Canada's largest brokerages. Uh, I don't know which one, but that seems pretty interesting. Part, probably part of the reason why they've been able to raise so much debt and get that first mover's advantage. Again, raising tens of millions of dollars is not easy. Uh, CSO, Chief Medical Officer, PhD, MBA, Chief, COO, CFO. Um, again, we know that they're going to have a good leadership team. They're one of the biggest companies in the space. They're one of the first movers. So I would assume they got a big team and robust team. Looks like here they also have research and clinical leadership as well. Science officer and general manager, senior research scientist. Um, senior research scientist, senior research scientist, PhD, MD, MD. Yeah, they got a pretty good team, it looks like. All right, high-level summary. A leader in psychedelic science and clinical delivery. Uh, global clinic expansion plan starting in Vancouver and Montreal uh, to deliver full suite of psychedelic offerings once regulated. Uh, proven medical research clinical and ex executive team to drive strategy, growth, and scale. Well-funded to advance research, research trials, therapeutic development, and clinic expansion. Health Canada licensed lab with more than 10 years history of botanical extraction, ongoing IP development and revenue generating contract services. Innovation with a history of firsts. First industry partner with MAPS. First compassionate access trials to MDNA for PTSD and psilocybin for substance disorders uh, in Canada. First pub code to cultivate and extract psilocybin from mushrooms. That's, that's right, extraction. So that's interesting, right? Interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, well, at a high level, that is numinous. So uh, interesting read, and I actually learned some things here. So I didn't know that uh, ketamine and MDNA were available for trial in Canada. Exciting to know, and uh, we'll see if the company has any other future updates for us. So thank you for tuning in. I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.